it turns out that there is a disturbing but entirely unsurprising trend taking place among what appears to be the international student population here in Canada. A viral Twitter post from this user showing a series of YouTube videos uploaded by Indian international students here in Canada talking about how they can get free food while studying here has been viewed more than 400,000 times and retweeted more than 1,000 times. It seems as though this Twitter post has struck a nerve. How to get free items in Canada, one video title reads. How to get free food in Canada for international students, another title reads. And how about this one, my personal favorite. Free food hamper for needy in Canada. And the thumbnail shows a mother with her child saying, I got diapers and chocolate. International students are coming to Canada to get access to our education system, paying twice the tuition fees that a Canadian-born student would pay, taking up spaces for Canadian students, and now it appears leeching off of the charitable initiatives of Canadians, going to food banks to essentially steal food from those who really need it most. Two things struck me, however, when I was making this video. The first being the gall of these people to make videos like this, showing them abusing a charitable system in place for Canadians is astounding. They don't even seem to have any shame at all. And the second thing that struck me was a question I asked myself. Who are these videos for? They're clearly not made for international students already here in Canada because as you will see later on in the show, they're already abusing the system. The videos clearly are to sell the idea of being an international student back home in India. They're being used as a promotion tool for more international students to come to this country and abuse the system. But are these international students really the ones to blame here? Or is it the Canadian education system working hand in hand with the government to stuff the coffers of failing colleges and universities while also creating a seemingly endless supply of cheap foreign labor? This is a story of greed and a story of abuse. Stick around to find out more. Drop a like in the video, help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel. And the common question for the episode is this. Is it time for Canada to significantly lower the number of international students coming to this country? Let me know in the comments and let's get into it. Take a look at this Twitter post from a user called John Carter. Immigration is extremely important to Canada's econ... Oh wait, what's this here? How to get free items in Canada by Neman Kapil? Free grocery, mattress, and blanket for international students in Canada by a one Naina Kukreja. How to get free food in Canada for international students, food hamper by a Samar Jeet Singh. How to get free food in Canada, food bank details, international student with family. Free food hamper for needy in Canada, Calgary food bank by one Ikra Azam. Well, it would appear as though these international students studying here in Canada have found a little trick up their sleeve. Instead of paying for food like the rest of us, they can save money while studying in Canada and go to the food bank to get food for free. Well, for them it's free, but of course, food at a food bank is not free. That food has been donated by Canadians doing something positive for their community. Most likely with the assumption that a homeless Canadian or a disabled Canadian or a Canadian born person who really needs the food is going to be able to rely on the charity of those good Canadians donating the food. I bet you, however, they aren't expecting young 20 year old Indian students to go there, get free food, and then make a video entirely in a different language to send back home talking about how they can get free food and free supplies in Canada. But nonetheless, that appears to be what's taking place. And like I said in the intro, this Twitter post has gone viral on the platform. Over 400,000 views, thousands of interactions. The comments are astoundingly negative. They're shocked about this, as I was. In fact, I had no idea that international students could be this shameless so as to promote what is essentially, in my view, theft. To steal food from people who actually need it, not international students. Take a look at some of these comments, and then we're gonna watch some of these videos, but keep in mind, we won't be able to understand them because none of them are in English. Domestic charities shouldn't be for non-citizens, period. Same thing going on in Australia. Foreign students are considered an export, but most pay their fees by competing with young Australians for jobs and rely on charity to feed themselves. Housing Ponzi scheme. 
The concept of shame is something that some have no familiarity with. I mean, it's utterly shameful. However, the one good thing we can say about this new trend is that these Indians who are making these videos about how you can basically steal food from the food bank are getting inundated with negative comments, people just ripping them apart, as they should. This video is from a one user called Mr. Patel. It's the most viewed how to get free food in Canada video we could find. Over 293,000 views. And this was posted just a year ago. Let's watch a little bit of this video and then we'll get into the good stuff, the comments. Okay, this is just 600 meters ke distance. Pe hi e stall and there every Tuesday and Thursday free food. Milta hai. So this guy here is explaining that every Tuesday and Thursday you can go and get free food. I mean, I'm not sure that's what he's saying, but I can imagine that's probably what he's talking about. If you skip forward, then you're able to see what this guy's been able to get for going to a food bank. First of all, guys, these are tomatoes, okay? These are also tomatoes, and there are also tomatoes. So these two tomatoes, there were also many tomatoes, but we don't need so many tomatoes, so we only have only one and two there, because one week, 10, 15 days, more than that is sufficient. Hai. It appears that this guy has managed to get himself, what, like 100 tomatoes? I don't know why you need so many tomatoes, but it looks like he's managed to get himself that. Maybe he just been hoarding up all the tomatoes. I don't know why you need so many tomatoes, but it looks like he's managed to get himself that. Maybe he's just been hoarding up all of this food that you can get whenever he goes to a food bank. He's even stacked it all up as a nice presentation for you to see. I mean, what has he got here? He's got, he's got six yogurts. We already mentioned his haul of over 100 tomatoes. Seemingly endless amount of eggs, bread, and cans of food. Now, for the good part, let's read the comments. This is for people who are in need, not because you want to save money. Respect our country and our people and don't take what you don't need. 1.4 thousand likes on that comment. I am Canadian and this is incredibly disrespectful. One of the standard requirements for a student visa in Canada is financial support. The students coming to Canada are vetted and if you can afford to be here, you can afford not to abuse our food banks. These food banks are not for thrifty people that want to save an extra buck. These are for people and families that are living at or below the poverty line. People who can afford either food or rent, but not both. You are absolutely being disrespectful and do not be surprised if you get confronted by Canadians in your neighborhood. Almost 500 likes on that comment as well. Take a look. The comments just keep getting better as well. Mr. Patel. I feel sorry for your parents. They must be so ashamed that their child is stealing from the poor and needy. I am an Indian and would truly apologize to all Canadians on behalf of these stupid people who are so inhumanely snatching homeless people food and calling it free. I mean, it just keeps going on. Let's take a look at this next one. So here's a guy who's got his DoorDash delivery bag who's on his way to go get, as he calls, free food and supplies at a food bank. Clearly, someone in desperate need of the free food. You should be ashamed of yourselves. This is why Canadians are running out of patience with these visitors who just want to take advantage of our generosity. You are some serious trash for taking food that is meant for disabled Canadians and other homeless Canadians that really need that kind of help. If your issue is that you can't afford food here in Canada as a student, then you shouldn't be here as a student. It's sickening to see some people from other countries purposely doing this kind of stuff. Truly shameful that Canada lets in these types of grifters and thieves. So it appears as though Canadians are completely fed up with this trend. And how could they not be? It's disgusting. It's gross. International students are supposed to come to this country with enough financial support to sustain themselves. You can't come to this country and then expect to leech off of our system. When you come as an international student, you're supposed to have at least a minimum of $10,000 on top of your tuition. And just to be clear with everyone, this is not just a YouTube trend. It's a real thing that's been taking place across the country for years now. Back in March of this year, the Cape Breton Student Union president had to issue a warning to the press that international students were misusing and abusing the campus food bank system. Daman Preet Singh says he's concerned that the on-campus food bank at Cape Breton University is attracting longer lineups largely from international students, including some who may not necessarily need to be there. It's not a place to get free groceries. We need to educate people more that the service is for those who are in greater need. We have to stop this misuse, he said. At UBC in Vancouver, international students make up only 30% of the student body, but at the local campus food bank, they make up close to 80% of food bank users. And in Ontario, a campus survey at Conestoga College found that 537 of the 556 students that rely on the on-campus food bank were international students, 96%. A couple of things can be happening here at the exact same time. Clearly, a subset of the international
international student population in Canada are coming here and abusing the food bank system, using it as a way to save money instead of actually just paying for groceries and working to pay for yourself while you're here. But also it would be wrong for us to make this video and not call out the universities and colleges that are bringing in an endless stream of international students as a cash grab, a way to stuff the pockets of these colleges and universities. International students, while taking up spaces that should be going to Canadian students, end up paying twice the tuition fees that a Canadian would pay. And at Cape Breton University, they're taking full advantage of that. Cape Breton University was a university in decline, but the new president came in with a new strategy to import as many international students as possible. In fact, the Cape Breton student population is 70% international students. 70%. Are we to expect that this is not taking place across the country at our universities and colleges? Of course it is. The numbers speak for themselves. Last year, Canada brought in a record number of international students into Canada, 551,000 student visas. And as of December 31st of 2022, the total number of student visas in Canada was over 800,000. In 2021, Canada approved 441,000 student visas. So the number is growing at a significant rate. The overwhelming number of student visas that were handed out in this country went to Indian students. Over 226,000 student visas in 2022 were granted to students coming from India. The second country on that list was China with just 55,000. And the overwhelming majority of these students, of course, end up in Ontario. And it's not even close, actually. It's kind of astonishing, really. 411,000 international students ended up in Ontario. And the second top destination province for international students was British Columbia, with only 164,000 students. Now, what kind of education are these international students, mostly from India, ending up in Ontario getting? In many cases, these international students who are coming from India end up spending tens of thousands of dollars of money that has to be pooled from around their family and saved for generations to come to this country to only end up realizing that ultimately they're just being used as a cash cow. It's just really a large scam because it's not really about giving them a good education. It's about making cash hand over fist and then having a seemingly endless supply of cheap labor where these students can get a job at Tim Hortons for a couple years before realizing they don't have enough points to qualify for PR status and then go home. But it doesn't matter because another 500,000 students are gonna come in each year. A CBC investigation into this situation produced a staggering statistic that is really a shock to the system. It turns out that these international students who are coming to Canada with the assumption that they're going to make a life for themselves are realizing that it's all a lie. And many of them who are living in poverty end up taking their own lives. One interview on this CBC documentary shows that a funeral home in Brampton is sending back four to five international student bodies from Brampton back to India every single month. Take a listen to this. We're hearing reports of high numbers of among international students in, in, in Brampton who are coming over here. There are multiple reasons for the deaths. On an average, uh, we have a connection with the one funeral home, that is Lotus Funeral Home. On an average, they are sending four to five dead bodies, only international students, each month. What? Each, each month? month, four to five dead bodies of only international students in India, they're sending back. It's an astonishing reality that we're now seeing in this country, flooding our system, not only with high immigration targets, but even higher international student targets to create an endless supply of cheap labor, of cheap surf class, low-skilled labor, while also stuffing the pockets of college and university bosses. Who does this help? It's not helping international students who are being sold a lie, and it's certainly not helping Canadians because actual Canadians can't afford a home, can't get jobs, and in many cases are having to rely on food banks. When you have international students who are scamming our system to get free food at food banks and are flooding the labor market with cheap, low-skilled labor, well, ultimately, it hurts Canadians the most. And who benefits? Well, of course, university bosses benefit, big corporate titans benefit because they have an endless supply of cheap labor, and of course, the government wins. But all of us in this situation are the losers. 
It's a disgrace. And these international students coming here to scam the system should feel ashamed. But we all know they probably don't. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for us today on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.